to the special council meeting. It is Wednesday, November 30th in the council chambers. Call to order, roll call. All present. Thank you. May we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public hearing on November 15, 2022, the recommended 2023 budget, including all changes made at the special council meeting on November 10th, was published in the city's official newspaper, Marshall News Herald. At this time, members of the public are invited to comment on the proposed 2022 budget. And our first is Lori Crookstrom. And Lori, you have five minutes and we will be timing you. Good evening, Lori Crookstrom, 1221 East 29th Street here in town. In town, resident over 30 years here in Marshfield. Um, I am deeply concerned about the significant budget cut that's occurring for the police department. Our emergency services have been stretched for the last couple of years when it comes to their budget and to their personnel and responding to calls. Having the significant budget cuts that have been proposed it's gonna significantly impact our future response next year. And I want the council to make sure they are aware of that and be cognizant of that fact. Um, I understand the budget's tight for the city, but I really would like to see it. Hopefully you guys recognize that emergency services is not the place the city of Marshfield needs to or wants to cut our citizens short. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Nicole Lauber. Thank you. My name is Nicole Labor. I am the Director of Human Resources in the Marshfield School District. With me, I have um, Officer Derek Iverson of the Marshfield Police Department. He is also Officer Friendly. Um, he is our crime prevention officer and actively supports our school district in many ways with meeting our students and, um, of course, promoting uh, the safety uh, amongst our, um, our school district. I was here um, previously on November 1st to talk about our student safety patrol program. I would like to ask that you reconsider the elimination of funding for that proposed budget and reinstate the $6,000 under policy 4.450, which is the donations of nonprofit, non-governmental organizations and cooperating government agencies. The policy states, the request must meet a public need and necessity for the purpose of providing a service that enhances public health, safety and welfare, and quality of life, and coordinates with and enhances services already provided by the city of Marshfield, including law enforcement. By having students fulfill this voluntary role, it reduces the need for law enforcement within the city for their crossing guards that are present at each elementary school to monitor student pedestrian traffic at busy intersections. Each day we have approximately 65 students assisting students and parents cross safely. By not having student crossing guards present, serious injury could occur. Students practice good citizenship, teamwork, they do better in school, they take on the responsibility of others, and they become role models for our younger students. As I mentioned before, all of the duties take place in the heat, the sun, the rain, the snow, when we're sitting in our cozy cars dropping our students off every morning and picking them up in the afternoon. The program has provided or previously been supported through the donation of the city spanning multiple decades. This proactive safety measure supports the Marshfield community as a whole, and parents feel that their community and school environment are safer. I again request that you reinstate the amount of $6,000. At the end of each year, a list of expenditures is submitted and only a portion of the funds are used if needed. Again, in the policy 4.450, it also asks if there is a practical, if practical, an attempt should be made to determine the return of investment. <clears throat> It is hard to put a price on student safety. However, I can. <laughs> if the student were to employ 65 additional adult crossing guards, 
for 1.25 hours per day at 11 hours per day for 176 days, the city would be out $157,000. So it's a lot different than the $6,000 that would buy new supplies, provide activities, snacks, and rewards to recognize the students who are doing an awesome job in our program. Again, I wanna thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Karen Rhodes. Good evening, my name is Karen Rhodes at 213 South State Avenue. I'm here to talk about an incident that if it could happen to me, it's gonna to happen to somebody and you won't have to worry about a million dollars trying to cut the budget to save. You're gonna to have to worry about millions because somebody's gonna sue the city and I don't wanna bash on anybody because I love every one of those guys and I thank God for the, the police, the fire and rescue and the EMTs. But on November 14th, I was at REMS for a funeral and there was no policeman there to direct the traffic out onto Oak Street. And so there were gaps in the procession. Well, some guy, stranger, stopped his car, directed traffic to let the rest of us get out. And we were told, have your flashers on, your lights on, and you can go through those red lights. That's a Wisconsin law, I guess. We went through um, by Adler Road. Then we got to Veterans, and there was a semi facing going towards Main Street and a bunch of cars behind it, but I didn't see what was on the other side, so I started pulling out, and the semi took off. He finally slammed his brakes on when I could see all the bugs on his grill, but I didn't see the traffic coming around, which was another semi doing about 40, 45, and an electrical truck and a couple other cars. That was some fancy driving, and boy, I was shook on that one. And then you get through the other intersection, and then people, I've never seen so many people in Marshfield running red lights in my life this year. She decides to tear off, but there was no cop there to stop that traffic. And I know we got to cut the budget somehow. I thought about fundraising or, you know, uh, crystal ball, you know, the money going for, to help out. But I said, our community, and I agree with Lori, has been taking care of way more than just Marshfield. We're, we're expanding. We need these people to be here, so we need that money in the budget. I don't know what you guys got to do, but if it's raising taxes, if people knew, well, I'm not going to miss another 50 bucks, you know, something like that, that would work. But I'm just saying, if we don't get police to help us out, and I even said, what about a volunteer? Or what about the, uh, the auxiliary police that go around the, the fairgrounds? Get them. Heck, I could even help out but somebody's gonna get killed without a police escort, or at least at veterans, you know, they was up by the cemetery. And that was, that shook me to the raw. And I just don't want it to happen to anybody else. And the guy behind me at the cemetery said, he's a truck driver. He said, if you would've got hit, there would've been nothing left of you. So that kind of spooked me right there. So I'm just begging you guys, do what you gotta do. If people know, make it's 20 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, Maybe they won't be so upset about raising taxes, but I think that's the only way to go because where are we going to find the money unless some nice person wins the lottery and donates it to the city, you know? So I just want to say we need the police, we need the fire and rescue, we need the EMTs because they have taken more responsibility, not just in Marshfield, but the whole surrounding area and then some. So we need to keep these guys on our team and take care of them. Thank you guys so much. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Robert Johannes, would you Hanix? Good evening, I'm Robert Johannes, and I have been directing the Marshall Civic Band for the past 20 years. Uh, it's been a real labor of love. It is the old expression, one man band. It pretty much is a one man band in terms of organizing it making it happen, making it operate year by year. And uh, when I originally came up here last month to speak about the civic band cut, um, I thought about later, I thought, well, you know what, how petty, how petty can I sound when you're talking about cutting firemen and policemen and other services, and here I am talking about a $4,800 donation that you usually give for the Civic Band every year, and how could that possibly 
compete with the safety of people. Well, living in a community is not just being safe, it's being cultured, it's being invigorated, it's being renewed by the arts. And if the band who's been in existence for 60 years now uh, gets its core funding donation from you, which is $4,800 a year, which I might add has not changed uh, for nearly the past 20 years. If that gets cut, our band will be severely pressed to survive. Um, I do firmly believe that the players in the band should be paid something for their efforts. We have people coming in from out of town. I have a tuba player that drives all the way down from Westboro to play in this band. That's a pretty long way. And uh, I really feel that the band is, is really special to this community. It's been an integral part of this community for many, many years. And uh, I just feel that uh, if it's at all possible, I live in this community. I've lived here for 23 years. I taught school here for 26. And uh, I'm semi-retired uh, music teacher. And uh, it, 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 a community needs needs cultural things like this, and your continued support of that, I think is extremely important. It remains one of the only activities that, we, that you fund or help fund or donate to that allows people of all ages to participate in it. I have band members who are in their 70s. I've had band members who've been in their 80s. I have band members who are 14 and 15 years old, just going into high school. And it's marvelous to see that kind of interaction between these age groups. Um, to quote an old quote from the Eisenhower administration, uh, you get a large bang for the buck uh, <laughs> with the civic band. I don't mean to make a joke about that, but um, you do get a lot out of this. This summer we were hoping to host the Wisconsin Bandmasters Summer Convention here in Marshfield, and I am in charge of that. But uh, like I said, if, if our funding doesn't go through, it will put a large dent in an in institution in its continuation that has been here for 60 years. And I would hope that you can consider or reconsider your budget cuts for that, as well as everything else. I, as a citizen, do not mind paying more taxes to keep these things going, obviously. And obviously, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that my band is more important than a fireman or a policeman because it's not, but it's me perhaps in, in overall scheme of things it isn't, but it's just as important to the morale of this community and the hundreds of people who have come to our park every summer to listen to us play. So I would hope you reconsider that. If it takes an increase in taxation, uh, it, you know, I'm, I'm for that, obviously. Um, and uh, it's a labor of love. And it's going to be continuing here for a long time. And I intend to continue, continue it. Whether we have your donation or not, uh, it's going to continue. But it will be very difficult to continue this band running without your yearly donation. Thank you very much. And have a nice Christmas. Thank you. Mike Myers. Hello, I'm Mike Myers, 2316 Madison Avenue, member of the board of directors of the Upham and the North uh, Wood County Historical Society. Not to be confused with the other Mike Myers who is pleading for things from the fire <laughs> police department. <laughs> Don't get the two confused. I'll tell you a little story. I would have never passed English in freshman year at Columbus if my teacher wouldn't have taken me aside and got me interested in writing. Um, a biography on William Upham. Uh, that included a lot of trips down from 4th and Wisconsin Avenue to the library, uh, paging through old newspapers and doing a lot of research and coming up with a document that is probably the first document and probably the last document I ever got that I got an E on. So, uh, that was basically the start of my interest in local history. Uh, later did a, a a pretty good write-up on Fred Beale. Um, and in later years, I found out that 
In fact, in 1952, in the organization, the Northwood County Historical Society was organized. My grandfather, Clarence C. Myers, was the first president. So there's a little bit of a connection there. And I maintain that with the photo collection and things that I have. But aside from that, um, my interest in being on the board of directors is to get some work done and to, of course, preserve history for people to enjoy for years to come. Uh, when I was mayor for six years, I um, had a theme where I, I pushed the whole idea of the Great Marshall Fire and gave the, every little third grader that came through my office a copy of the paper from Spencer the day after the fire, which was a, a, a word, I mean, a, a very extensive report on what happened in Marshall the day of, in 1887. I'm here to ask that you reconsider um, the $7,500 partnership with the North American or North Center, Northwood County Historical Society. Um, we have very few expenses, but the ones we have can't be covered by just um, membership dues. Um, we have electricity, we have heat, we have security, we have telephone and communications charges. And we go from one thousand five hundred dollars to the next seven thousand five hundred dollars with some other stuff, and now donations, personal donations that sometimes come in, and that's how we operate. That's how we survive. Um, you can only expect things from people who have the same interest, but at the same time, the entire community can take advantage of preserving that home of preserving that piece of history. And again, I mentioned it once before, but I'll say it again. It's one of the very few, very few buildings that survived that fire in 1887. And it was the home of a governor. It was the home of a Marshall mayor. And it was the home of the guy who, you can basically say, started Marshall and, and promoted Marshall like no other person in the city since or probably will ever see, so. Please can reconsider. We would certainly appreciate it, and we certainly appreciate your contributions in the past, and especially the partnership that I like to refer to all the time. Uh, it's been good, and we'd like to continue that. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Any other public comment? Any other public comments? Any other public comments? Seeing none, we'll go on to item D. Staff request for consideration of possible adjustments to the proposed 2023 budget to address two separate issues presented by Jennifer Selinski, Finance Director. Good evening. The first issue that I would like to talk about um, occurs in our economic development fund where we had a miscommunication um, between those of us who were entering the budget and those who were preparing the budget. And what had happened was uh, $85,813 worth of expenditures were omitted from the budget. Um, these are things um, that the EDB had submitted and we, it was just uh, an oversight on our part that they did not get entered. So I would ask um, that council incorporate these changes in the economic development fund into the budget. Um, or alternatively, we would come to you in 2023 with a budget amendment um, in order to get these expenditures that will occur in 2023 into the budget. Yeah, um, pardon me, Rebecca can't hear. Is that correct, Rebecca? Rebecca, you can't hear, is that correct? Uh, is there something with the Zoom connection on our side? Rebecca, can you hear me?
Mm. Can you hear me now? You are muted. You can mute or the host would like you to unmute your microphone. You can press star six to unmute. You are unmuted. I'm just curious. Right now, can you hear us now? Um, need to... Can you guys hear me? Yes, we yeah. can. Yes. Jennifer, can you hear me? Yes. I can hear you. Can you hear me? You can hear me. I can't hear you. Should I just call back in? Yes. Yes? Yeah. I'm going to hang up and I'm going to call back in. Leave me. Are you able to hear me? No go. I can try. How about now? She's in the hall. Oh, she's going to. Are you able to hear? I'm oh, just trying. Hello? Are you connected? I can't hear you. In. All right, I'm going to turn off your iPad. Yeah. Yeah. Turn off your iPad. Yeah. Yeah.
Uh, I can try. Do I have that? In, I, I'll have the number in the in your notice, right? Yes. Welcome to Zoom. Enter your meeting ID followed by pound. You have not entered any numbers. Please re-enter your meeting ID followed by pound. You have not entered any numbers. Please re-enter your meeting ID followed by pound. Bye. <laughs> Welcome to Zoom. Enter your meet ID. Followed. Enter your participant ID followed by pound. Otherwise, just. Please enter the meeting password, followed by pound. You are in the meeting now. There are five participants in the meeting. 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 All right, I'm going to say from here. All right, I'm on. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Can you hear us? Hello? Can you hear us, Rebecca? Hello? That's okay, so we define the next hang on. That would have been great. And I would have proven it. What? Was, yeah. That would have been a very short term answer. Yes, sir. <laughs> Tell me. Welcome to Zoom. Enter your meeting ID followed by pen. <laughs> as live as we can. Okay. Enter your participant ID, followed by please enter the meeting password, followed by pound. Our ratings are falling. You are in the meeting now. There are three participants in the meeting. That's Rebecca's now. Hello? Oh, can you can hear you? us now, Rebecca? Can you just... Uh, yeah, barely, but... Okay. Is her iPad on? Is your iPad in also, Rebecca? No, because it causes too much reverb. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll briefly recap um, the first issue that I had talked about. Um, it was a miscommunication between um, finance and the department creating the budget where we had inadvertently omitted $85,813 from the Economic Development Fund. Um, these expenses will occur, so I would ask that um, you incorporate the changes uh, for $85,813 into the Economic Development Fund budget for 2023. Anybody like to make a motion? Oh, oh, I can't see the board. Oh, I can't see the board. Oh, yeah, because the the um, Zoom screen is still up. 
Thank you. Motion by Alderman Wagner, second by Alderman Witzel. Oh, excuse me. Motion by Alderman Wagner. Excuse me, let me start again. Motion by Alderman Tompkins, second by Alderman Wagner. Alderman Wagner. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Jennifer, this, uh, this doesn't actually have any effect on the bottom line mill rate at all, does it? This is separate from the general fund. This right, is this in, is a, this is a correct. separate fund. Correct. So it wouldn't affect any of the things that people talked about here tonight. Anyway. Correct. Okay, thank you very much. Anyone else? Seeing none, please vote. Mrs. Spiros. Yes. Nine ayes and one nay, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. The second issue that um, we will need to make a determination on this evening is in regards to the recent um, delay in the, the application process for the state trust fund loan. At the time I had created the budget, I had anticipated that the loan would be approved by now and we would have um, a scheduled interest and principal payment schedule. The statute only allows us to levy for debt for those items that have that already have a, a schedule in existence. So because of the delay, we don't have that schedule. So it would violate the statute if we levied um, in 2023 for the principal and interest payment that I had anticipated would be done. So with that, um, what we would need to do was amend the budget in the debt service fund um, 301 um, by $50,600. And that would be a reduction in principal of $44,000 dollars and a reduction in interest of six thousand six hundred dollars um, this in turn reduces uh, the anticipated levy um, rate mill rate um, which we will cover at the time um, should you approve this change then we'll go in at the time of approving the resolution I will give you the new uh, levy rate so with that, I would ask that you amend the debt service funds budget by $50,600. Motion by Alderman Witzel, second by Alderman Fisher. Any comments? Alderman Tompkins. Okay, Jennifer, sorry, that was um, some of the vocabulary. So is this hurting us at all? By doing it this way? No, this does not um, hurt us. So what ha what happens when it comes to making scheduled principal and interest payments um, for general obligation debt, we need to levy for those an amount to cover those payments. Because we don't have a schedule today, it would be inappropriate to levy that amount that I had anticipated um, to be there at this time. So we need to remove that amount. It will actually reduce um, the levy by um, two or three cents per, per thousand. Okay, and then if, when we do have that debt, mm -hmm. will we not be able to levy that for 2023? So the earliest that this loan um, could be approved by the Borough of Commissioners of Public Land would be at their December 20th meeting. Um, given the time frame, the first uh, payment would be due in 2024. So we would levy um, for this debt in, uh, in 2024. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, please vote. Mrs. Spiros. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time finding my mute on my phone. <laughs> All eyes, motion carries, thank you. And then the last update that I wanted to bring to your attention um, was at the, la at the last budget meeting, we had noted that $101,734 would have to be used from our ARPA funds in order to balance the budget. Um, there was a mathematical summation error in our, su in our spreadsheet, um, the amount as of um, prior to any changes that may occur tonight that we would be repurposing is actually only $51,734. So I just wanted to call that to your attention um, this evening. Thank you. Item E, discuss any changes to city's proposed 2023 budget. 
desired by council members. Presented by Steve Bark, City Administrator. Thank you, Mayor. Well, as the Mayor read under uh, item C, the, uh, the 2023 budget as modified by the council on November 10th was published in the Marshfield News Herald on, on November 15th. That's where you started tonight. You have made two changes, one under the Economic Development Board budget and the other under the debt service levy uh, just moments ago to uh, amend that. And uh, so that's what you have in front of you as we sit here right now, that's where you stand. You heard uh, five members of the public uh, ask for changes. Uh, you may have come tonight as council members with thoughts of your own for modifications. With that, we go to the part where it's your time for discussion and deciding uh, what you wanna bring forward for a vote. Alderman Tompkins. Um, so I, there was just a clarification that I needed. Um, and it was when it was a while ago, it was two meetings ago when Chief Fletty said, um, I can find 14,000 to take away, but if you take away any more than that, we're gonna lose services. And it was a big meeting and we had a lot of things flying at us. And I, we never found out what services he was gonna take away. And I went home and I thought, wait a second, we were never given that like sort of list of what we're gonna lose. And so if that's, a, is it okay if we ask, if I can, can I ask Chief Letty what those services would be? Absolutely. And so, we're down to cutting operating supplies right now at this point. Actually, we're beyond that. We're cutting operating supplies, maintenance supplies. Um, the services we'd have to look at cutting um, would be mainly our technical rescue, which would include confined space rescue, uh, trench rescue, high angle rescue, um, and uh, urban search and rescue teams. Um, as far as training equipment, everything would have to be removed. And that's the only way we can get to the $50,000 cut that was assigned to us at this point. Um, also includes some cuts to hazmat, um, like peak software. Um, peak helps us uh, determine chemicals rapidly on a hazmat scene, um, tells us what chemicals are reactive with other chemicals. It'll give us a plume, a lot of plume for us in rapid time. Um, does a lot of different things, but it's an expensive program that we need for HAZMAT, but there are other programs out there that are not as efficient, so we'd end up cutting some some stuff like that as well. Um, and lastly, our child passenger seat program, which is very popular with the public, actually. Um, we have about, I think, five or six trained and certified members at our department, and what they do is um, they help parents, grandparents, uh, other people that want to install a child safety seat or a child seat in their car, um, they're trained to install those correctly because if they're not installed correctly and you're in a motor vehicle accident, um, it may not work the way they're supposed to. So there's a high level of training that goes into that. Um, we're here 24-7, 365. It's been a very popular program, but we do have to maintain certification and, and things like that in order to keep this program up, up and running. So um, that's one of the things we would end up having to cut. It's kind of like, uh, uh, this is the only way I can relate it because it's the way my mind works. I've been in this field for 25 years. Um, you know, when you're, when you're bleeding out, um, much like our budget is, your, your body tends to draw the blood back towards the center of your, your organs, so keep your organs alive. Um, and that's kind of what we're doing right now. We're kind of bleeding out our budget and uh, keeping fire everything we can and fire and EMS, which is our main core. Um, and, and we have to cut some of these programs. So that's, that's where we're at. Um, and I hope that makes sense to you and, and what that means. So can I just ask a clarifying question? So for like confined space, or you said, can you give a scenario? Like, is that like a, if a building collapses, are you? Sure, so confined space is, um, we have several of those in our community. It's, it's places like um, uh, Masonite uh, food processing places where they have to go into a, a space that's uninhabitable, um, perhaps with machinery in there. Um, they have to lock out and tag out the machinery, maybe go in and clean uh, a confined space, 
or something like that. If somebody goes down in there, there's a certain level of training that we're required to have by the state in order to enter those confined spaces and perform a rescue. Um, if, if we're not certified, technically we're, we cannot go in that space. And if we get hurt, then we're, there's gonna be a liability issue. Um, so what these companies would need to do is I'm sure there's other other businesses out there that uh, they would have to hire or and I'm not aware of any in our area. Most fire departments have a high angle rescue, a confined space rescue team, at least full time fire departments do. Um, but that's uh, something we'd have to look at um, cutting in order to keep our fire and EMS operations up and running. And, and so would any of these be scenarios where like citizens, something happened, there's an accident? And are you saying that you wouldn't have certification to respond? Correct. Yeah, we'd be cutting the training, we'd be cutting the equipment, everything to respond to those incidents. So even like rope, believe it or not, has a shelf life to it or an expiration date. So it only lasts 10 years. So there, there's a, a constant cost to keeping these programs up and running. Um, and that's that's just one of the things we'd, we'd be looking at. Okay. Um, I mean, I really like your bleeding scenario. I understand that. Um, I feel like you guys, this has been a really hard financial year for you guys. I feel like you're almost in a disequilibrium in a way, just trying to figure out where you guys are. Um, I don't feel comfortable with our community not having those services. I think that, like, what would we do as a community if we don't have those services and something happens? Right. I mean, the potential is is that person in that confined space may have to wait for Wausau or Rapids or Point, who have a confined space team to come and perform the rescue at that point. Um, there's certain things we can do, like if oxygen were to drop in that confined space and that's why they went down, we could blow fresh air in there and do things like that. But I'll, I'll tell you, if we go in there untrained, uncertified, and try to perform a rescue, we get big trouble from the state of Wisconsin. Yeah, um, it, it just seems like we're, we'd be moving backwards if we already have people who are trained and certified and suddenly we can't do that and we have to wait for another team to come from 45 minutes or an hour away. Right, and one of the other issues is too, if, if, if we drop it in 23, can we bring it back in 24? Yes, but you have to be, uh, go through a recertification annually on this. So if we miss one year, we're gonna to have to go back through the initial training course and it's gonna become more expensive in 24 if we, if we wanna bring it back at that point. So um, this is a tough choice to make, believe me. Uh, we were cutting maintenance um, out of this 50,000 as well. And I'll tell you maintenance is, is um, one of those budgets that's always really tight. And we're, we're looking at cutting $2,000 out of there. So, if I had other areas to cut money out of, I, I would do that. But I, the only place I can really look for a significant cut, like fifty thousand dollars, is our our ancillary services, I guess. Okay. Um, I know that I voted to for this budget, but I really feel like we need an amendment on this. Um, I mean, I'm going to move that we move forty thousand dollars from ARPA funds to fire. I realize that this isn't sustainable. I realize that this is going to feel like a band-aid. I would say this is more like a compression bandage. We're going to try to keep your department from bleeding out, get a little more stability. I'm hoping, I mean, I know that you already have a fee service. I know that you're already looking at grants. I feel like your department needs a little bit of breathing room so that you can actually get on your feet. And, and I don't feel comfortable not having these services in a community that doesn't have anything around them. Um, so I move to amend this budget by adding $40,000 from ARPA um, to the fire prevention budget for 2023. Thank you. Motion by Alderman Tompkins, second by Alderman Witzel. Any other discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Mrs. Spiros. 
I am going to vote no. Can we do voice votes so I can hear how people are voting, please, from now on? We'll use the board, the board and I'll relay it on this one. It's a seven to three vote with the no's being Fisher, Spiros and O'Reilly. Thank you. Alderman Witzel. Thank you. Uh, I wish to address uh, some of the comments that were made um, during the public hearing. Uh, and I understand that, that there was talk uh, amongst those that spoke up about the willingness to pay additional taxes. Uh, the problem that we're facing is a law by the state. And basically what that law says is that we're only allowed to raise the taxes a certain amount based on our net new construction. Our net new construction for this past year was very small, which means that we have a very, very slim amount of money that the state will allow us to raise taxes. It has nothing to do with how much we spend. It has nothing to do with anything else. It's we're locked in. And I think our, our finance team probably has that number at their fingertips to say how much we can raise it. It is slim. It's not even a percentage point. If we could look at raising taxes, I'm sure there's people on this on this council that would say, mm -hmm. we have no choice, we have to do that. I know that there are some that would also argue that we can't, but we simply can't because of the state law. The law says you can raise it this tiny much, and we're gonna raise it this tiny bit of, you know, but we're, we're not allowed by law to do anything further. So I just wanted to make sure that those that had spoken up and those that are listening understand we're doing everything we can Raising taxes is not even a legal option at this point. Yeah, if I can add to that, uh, with what Council Member Witzel said, that amount I think is like 1.02%, right around there. And it is, it's, we've had um, many meetings over the years that I've been here during the budget process where we've talked about, are you willing to go to 2% or 2.5% 2 tax rate increase? It really isn't that. We're, we're levying as much as we're allowed to levy by state law, and the tax rate is going to go up by roughly 1%. Uh, it can't be increased more. So this is not a year of uh, discussion about whether to raise the tax rate to cover services. We're at the maximum based upon the very limited net new construction that we achieved this year. Alderman Witzel. Thank you. Um, I also want to address one other thing. Um, I made a note here as we had various people talking. Um, at our last council meeting, we had some discussion and it'll be coming forth at future council meetings regarding the possibility of a referendum that will allow us to raise those taxes specifically for um, emergency services. So we're looking at, you know, what does that look like for the police department? What does that look like for the fire department? We're trying to put something together so that hopefully we can get that out to the public, let people realize that since we're locked in by the state law that says we can barely raise our taxes this year, but we have this need that we can then let the, the, um, the citizens of Marshfield make that determination. But I wanna mention about specifically the Northwood County Historical Society and the Marsh, Marshfield Civic Band. Those are two items that have been removed from the budget because we're very, very tight. Those are two items that I see as being vital items from a tourist perspective. And I really, really would like to see, since it's not in our current budget, that maybe the CVB, Visit Marshfield, whatever they're calling themselves today, would look at providing that $12,300 total. It's not a lot. And if CB, CVB is listening, I would really recommend fill that gap. Uh, this is something that's advertised. It's advertised in various promotional materials. Um, I would assume online and elsewhere, it, it is a draw that brings people in. Let's try to get some monies from that organization to help cover that. Thank you. Any other discussion? Alderman Pachel. Thank you, Mayor. Um, several meetings ago, I don't know if it was the first budget meeting we had or maybe the second one, I expressed my opinion that I thought that the 
city staff had done a superb job of creating a budget and finding a way to um, make it work, to move money from one account to another account, whatever it took to cover the things that were budgeted for the citizens of Marshfield. When I started in this position almost six years ago, I made up my mind that I was always going to make my decisions based on what I thought was best for the citizens of Marshfield. These changes that we have made, I do not see as being in the best interest of the citizens of Marshfield. I will be voting no on this budget. Any other comments? Request to approve resolution number 2022-48, determining and levying the amount to be raised by taxation for city purposes for, finance, for fiscal year 2023, presented by Jennifer Solinsky, Finance Director. Uh, okay, the city clerk is saying that we didn't finish F. I know we discussed possible changes. I guess uh, the idea is to make a motion for a, a budget to bring forward 4G, which would be as with the changes made so far in the agenda to this point. And then G will be whether or not to approve the resolution to uh, certify the budget and the tax levy. So I apologize, Mayor. I, I, I thought that was all wrapped up in G, but I guess the, the idea is would somebody be willing to make a motion under, while we're still under F, to approve the proposed budget uh, and bring that forward for a final vote in under G. It's kind of a semantics in a sense. And we have a motion by Alderman Wagner, a second by Alderman Handler. Any other discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Mrs. Spiros. I'm sorry, can you repeat what we're voting on? Why don't I take this for a second? In case I, if, you don't, if you don't mind, I want to take this because what you're really voting on at this point is approval of the 2023 budget with the changes made so far tonight. The last item, G, is really just approving a resolution to certify that budget and the tax levy officially. So this is truly the vote on the 2023 budget with the changes made so far this evening. And I'm sorry, if I can follow up. So the changes were the ones that Jennifer talked about um, earlier and adding $40,000 back to the fire department budget from ARPA. That Those is are correct. the only changes, correct? Yep, starting from what you guys okay, approved. Thank you. Right, starting with, with, with what you approved with the cuts on uh, November 10th and then making the changes you noted, that's exactly where it puts us right now. That's what you're voting on. There, there's one addition. So remember, we are managing our reserve for contingency. So the, the $40,000 that was approved to be added back to the budget, remember, we're, we're aiming to make our total general fund budget be $25,290,000. So we have to make the corresponding adjustment down in our reserve for contingency in order for our total budget in the general fund to remain $25,290,000. Just want to make that clear that that would be a two-sided entry into the budget. Okay. So that would be the understanding that we're doing that as part of a motion to approve the budget right now with what the changes have been made. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, go ahead, Mayor. Mrs. Spiros, your vote? No.
Jessica, can you still hear me? Sorry, it's a tie. The mayor is deciding. Oh, I'm sorry. That motion did carry six to five, no votes. Alderpersons Fire, Aishel, Witzel, Spiros, and O'Reilly. Yes votes, Tompkins, Varsho, Wagner, Fisher, Hendler, and the mayor. Moving on to item G, request to approve resolution number 2022-48 determining the levy, the amount to be raised by taxation for city purposes for financial year 2023, presented by Jennifer Selinski, finance director. I will go ahead and read the resolution out loud because what was presented in your packet is no longer accurate given the changes that were made this evening. Um, so now, therefore, be it resolved by the Common Council of the City of Marshfield, Wisconsin, and after a public hearing held November 30th, 2022, pursuant to notice published by law on November 15th, 2022, item one, that the 2023 adopted budget, excluding Marshfield utilities, be established in the amount of $49,491,719. And item two, that the sum of 15 million Two hundred forty-one six hundred sixty dollars excludes estimated TID levy B and hereby determined to be the amount to be raised by taxation for city purposes for the city of Marshfield for the 2023 fiscal year and that item three a tax rate of 10.581 8037 per $1,000 of assessed valuation be established to realize the above levy amount. Motion by Alderman Tompkins. Second by Alderman Varsho. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Mrs. Spiros? No. That motion carries 6 4 with the no votes being Alderpersons Fire, Patial, Spiros, and O'Reilly. Yeah. Move to adjourn. Motion by Alderman Witzel, second by Alderman Tompkins. We are adjourned. Thank you.